Benvenuti, siamo qui col frontman dei Mad Honey, è un evento pazzesco, siamo contentissimi di ospitarlo al Locomotive Club and uh, welcome, thank you to be here with us. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> and so, you are in the famous top 50 by Nirvana, the famous one uh, from the journals uh, of Carcoban, and uh, with Superfoods Big Muff of 1988. So it's a funny thing because uh, yesterday I was look on the net and uh, under your video that is um, touch me I'm sick uh, there are many comments and uh, there, there is someone really interesting. The first time I saw Nirvana I thought hey one of those mad honey like bands from Seattle and another says Mad Honey is the reason my friends and I saw Nirvana in 93. Mad Honey opened for them. So this is a, a funny and a real thing. What do what you think about this statement? Oh, I don't think you can trust the comments on uh, the internet. No. no, because you're really humble, but you, you started a movement, a kind of... Yeah, I don't know if we started anything. I mean, we were playing with a whole bunch of different people who were playing in Seattle. Um, there was probably a group of about 50 people, 50 to 75 people that would be at every show. And a lot of these bands like maybe existed for only one show. Sometimes it would be a band that like ended up lasting for 30 years. But, uh, you know, we all kind of played in various lineups with different people. And we were just basically trying to entertain ourselves and each other. Okay. Um, there wasn't much to do. You know, there was no internet. There was no, like, you know, you couldn't just look on Facebook and see what other people had been eating that day. So we had to make up things to do for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So according to this, how was the atmosphere in Seattle in the mid-80s and 90s? Well, I, I think the atmosphere depends on who you were. Like, uh, for my friends and I, which was a small subgroup of the city, I mean, it's like, you know, close to a million people in the surrounding area of the city, and we're talking a handful, like maybe 200 people yeah. total, until like the early 90s when it kind of maybe got to a couple thousand. But of like the people who went to the shows in the 80s, <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, we were basically like, it ran the gamut of scumbags to university students to, you know, it's all like people who are interested in underground music, uh, you know, basically punk rock okay. and what grew out of punk rock.
This is a big question, a classical one. You're celebrating the 30 years uh, of the band. And uh, you made possible to grunge movement to become reality, as we said, but with, uh, together with the other bands, uh, yes, uh, as we said before. And uh, you, this is for sure, inspired many Indian alternative rock bands. Um, how did your sound change? in the years and are you still recording in analog right uh, yeah you know the new record we recorded onto two inch tape and was mixed down to quarter inch tape um it didn't go into pro tools except as a safety copy like the the uh we sent tape to yeah. the mastering so uh it was not electronic files or anything like that um so yeah we still do that and But I mean, the previous record we recorded using tape and a combination of tape and Pro Tools. Uh, but it was our uh, Johnny Sankser, who's our engineer who produced the last two records. It was his idea to like do the whole thing on tape. And we're like, sure. And it kind of simplifies things. And that works for sure because all we uh, can listen, that the sound is, is really genuine, is really real. And. Uh, Well, I, mean, I don't think like anything that gets recorded onto a computer is any less real, unless it gets manipulated, you know, um, which we don't tend to do. Yeah. Oh, everybody says you must have lost your head. curious um, how is your typical day uh, if you have uh, one your your day you you woke up and then uh, what you do at home yeah But in your lifetime I, I usually if it's a weekday I wake up and say goodbye to my wife and dog and go to work and then <laughs> come back eight hours later and have dinner and hang out But you have two works like the musician work and the another one? Yes, I'm the warehouse manager at Sub Pop Records. So that's what I do most of the time. We, you know, we only, this tour is three weeks yeah. and most of the rest of the year we're all at home working. But this is amazing because actually it's, it's really interesting to to have a, um, a various kind of, of work uh, in, in the day. And uh, so this is the, the thing maybe that bring you to, to have 30 years uh, together. Well, I think uh, actually having real jobs uh, gives us musical freedom. Yeah. Where we don't rely on the music to make money and pay our bills and feed our children or whatever. Yeah. We, That's taken care of, and then we can make the music that we want to make without concern if it's going to like be popular or if people like it or not. And you know, hopefully people do, but we're not trying to second guess what people want to hear. You know, we just play the music we love, and if people like it, then that's great.
your last video uh, out on September of this year, and uh, it's um, Kill Yourself Live. Right. I watch it uh, like thousand times. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, because it's really amazing. Il uh, loro ultimo video, Kill Yourself Live, uh, è fantastico. È uscito a settembre di quest'anno. Guardatelo tutti perché è pazzesco. It's a, an, an iconic video. And can you um, tell us how the, the video started and why did you choose the Jesus Christ passion like an iconic image? Well, that was actually all uh, the director's idea, Carlos Lopez. We'd done a couple of videos with him before for the last record. And, you know, always have thought his, like, ideas are fantastic. And, uh, you know, we gave him the record. And he noticed this more than I did, that actually there were a lot of religious themes on the record. And there's no real religious theme in Kill Yourself Live, but he wanted to kind of combine the overall theme of the okay. record with the video and he came up with this idea of doing a, you know, a, sort of a last temptation of Christ sort of thing, uh, but with smartphones and the internet and whatnot, you know, just bringing it into kind of a modern times and a more ridiculous context. Yeah, because maybe in nowadays even the death is a show. Yeah. So this is the thing that came uh, on the video. Uh, everything is a show, and unfortunately, maybe. Well, I mean, if you think about, like, you know, Christ's death, he knew about it ahead of time, and he knew he was going to rise from the dead. You know, if you believe all that stuff, he, you know, he knew what was coming, you know, and it was all just for show in a way, too. Yeah. It, it just wasn't uh, captured on video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really funny. So watch it because it's amazing, really amazing. And um, uh, another fun and interesting fact uh, is that your uh, label, your record label, um, Sub Pop Records, um, in uh, 2006 uh, um, gained a Green E certificate, a certificate uh, with uh, renewable energy. So you use uh, a renewable uh, energy to cover the requirement of energy of your studio. So this is uh, um, an amazing thing because uh, uh, even more in these days, uh, um, with the attention of, for environment, maybe you are the first uh, record label to, to do this. Oh, I, I don't know if we're the first or not. Um... You know, there's a lot that needs to be kind of offset for in the record industry, like physical product is either like vinyl, which is made of oil, yeah. or CDs, and which is made of plastic. You know, a lot of this stuff doesn't just break down easily, like cardboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot to atone for. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing of music is it's ever changing, it's in, in continuous uh, changing. So that's sure. why you, you are a mix of uh, many types of music. So this is the thing that is still alive in the music. So maybe this is the main thing to be together in 30 years, changing uh, and uh, doing something new. Right. I mean, we do something new in an old way. Yeah. <laughs> we, we have our, you know, our methods yeah. that, uh, and we're not, you know, going to do like an EDM song or anything like that. We're not going to yeah. start, you know, chasing trends or anything like that. And I think it would sound weird if we tried to. <laughs> it would sound kind of pathetic. I've heard something on, during the sound check, something electronic. So... Oh, yeah, but that's like all, you know, rooted in the 70s. Yeah. 
it's an old analog synthesizer that uh, um, uh, a few years ago we uh, played in Asheville, North Carolina, which is the home of Moog synthesizers okay. or Moog synthesizers. Um, and we got a tour, and I bought a little pedal, and Guy bought a keyboard, and since then Guy has started a synthesizer band that it you know only it's him and another person who just only do synthesizers and they have a projectionist and uh, so Guy has brought that cool. influence into the band They will have a huge tour around the city in Europe, in Paris. You're going to play. Yeah, uh, we're going to Paris. Yeah. So this is amazing because uh, French, French world, music world is um, in, really interesting too. So oh, it's right. nice to, to play yeah. there. Yeah, we have, we have uh, three shows in Italy. We're very excited to come to Italy as always. Yeah. Um, it's one of our favorite places to eat. <laughs> we um, know why. And, and the wine is fantastic. Um, and then after that we go to Zagreb and, and Vienna and then Paris and then end in the UK. Yeah, super. So thank you really and uh, we, we see you soon. Excellent. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.